Hello and welcome to another video of mine. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about using lossless scaling frame generation in a game like Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Now, with the ever-evolving landscape of image scaling technologies, LSFG, which stands for lossless scaling frame generation, throws its hat into the ring. And today's video explores its effectiveness when applied to an older title like Assassin's Creed Odyssey, a title which is lacking native support for AMD FSR or DLSS. So I'm going to be talking about what are the pros and cons of using LSFG on a game like this while also using an older GPU like the RX 6800M, which is a mobile GPU from 2021. Okay, so moving forward in the video, I'm just going to call lossless scaling frame generation LSFG. So, this basically promises frame rate improvements by generating additional frames between existing ones. That's how all these frame generation softwares work. So, in theory, this can provide smoother gameplay on hardware that might otherwise struggle with Assassin's Creed Odyssey's demanding visuals. The ability to upscale from a lower resolution to a higher one while maintaining image quality is also an attractive proposition. But the results with Assassin's Creed Odyssey are a mixed bag. On compatible hardware, LSFG can indeed deliver a noticeable frame rate boost, particularly at low resolutions. This can be a game changer for players with less powerful rigs who want to experience the beauty of ancient Greece at a smoother frame rate. Now that is one of the reasons as to why I wanted to show this performance on my older Asus ROG Strix G15 Advantage Edition from 2021 and I chose to play it on that instead of my comparatively newer machine which has the NVIDIA 4070 Super. The good part about my Asus ROG Strix G15 is that it has the RX 6800M which is a 12 GB dedicated eGPU. So with that 12 gigabytes, I can crank the textures up to high or ultra high and even then, I have a lot of headroom, as you can clearly see. It does not exhaust the whole 12 gigabytes of graphical memory. So I even have this on 4K. But um, even if I have it on 4K, and even if I have that headroom, with all the settings turned to ultra high, with the textures turned up to high or ultra, the issue is that even though this headroom exists, when it comes to real-world performance, and if I show you the graphical overlay that I have, then it does not translate to high FPS. I'm only getting around 30 FPS. So this is the downside of using an older GPU like the RX 6800M. So even though the textures are all high, I can't really take advantage of the GPU to get higher frame rates. And therefore, I needed something like frame generation. Therefore, I'm making this video. I'm sure a lot of you folks who want to experience Assassin's Creed Odyssey in all its glory would also want to use something like a frame generation software. The other thing is there are a lot of handheld devices which are actually coming out. Now, although I'm trying this out on my laptop, but um, there is a use case, a very solid use case for using lossless scaling frame generation, LSFG, on these handheld devices like the Asus ROG Ally or the Lenovo Legion Go. Because on these small devices where you don't get to play this game on a high resolution, you can actually take advantage of a software like LSFG. And um, Whatever I am about to show you in this video would probably apply to these handhelds as well. So what I want to talk about initially is the scaling type. Because if you take a look at the scaling type, a lot of these new games and these new GPUs, they have features like DLSS or AMD FSR, which unfortunately is not available on an older title like Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Now, the good news is that you still get frame generation thanks to LSFG. But if you're using any of the newer titles, and if you have DLSS, and if you have FSR, I would recommend that you turn them on from within the game 
and don't try to force them on from this LSFG UI. It just works better that way. So just use the native DLSS or native FSR from within the game's settings. Now, if you do not have DLSS or FSR on a game, then it is irrelevant whether you use the scaling type or whether you don't use the scaling type. I might as well just keep it off. But if you want to keep it on LS1 or if you want to play around with some of these other options, you can do that as well. It's not going to make much of a difference. Let me tell you that. And if you do have AMD FSR and DLSS, you are comparatively better off using those upscalers and using the native frame generation of FSR or DLSS over this. I'm just re-emphasizing on that. Now, the scaling mode, I generally keep it on auto. You do have some options. Again, you can play around with it. But apart from that, I don't do anything with the scaling mode. I just keep it on auto. Now, I also want to mention about the HDR. If you want to play the game with HDR turned on, you may want to click on this HDR support button and just put the toggle to on instead of off. Otherwise, you will just experience some very weird colors on screen. Apart from that, I do have the uh, draw FPS on here because I do want to capture uh, what kind of frame rates I am getting. And apart from that, the new lossless scaling frame generation also has an option of um, either having two times frame generation or three times frame generation. That's a good thing. So you even have an option of that. So if you have a high refresh rate monitor or a television which supports 120, 144 hertz, you might want to take advantage of that and also use three times the frame generation. Uh, that option exists. And I'm going to show you the example of that in a short bit. In fact, the opening sequence that you saw, the comparison, that was with frame generation turned on to three times of what the game could do. So that should give you some perspective or some context as to what kind of performance you can draw out of LSFG on three times the frame generation. Now, overall, what I want to say is that um, it works well most of the times, but there are drawbacks. What kind of drawbacks are we talking about? Now, first of all, again, let me show you that I am playing this game on 4K right now. I just want to re-emphasize on that. This is on borderless or full screen at the moment. So with this on full screen or borderless mode, the image looks crisp. Everything looks sharp. Even the image in the background, the mountains, the trees, etc. All of that looks crystal clear. But as soon as I turn LSFG on, I don't know if the camera is able to pick this up, but there's a weird screen flickering that is happening right now. Especially notice the rocks in the background. There is some kind of a flicker that is happening. The grass also has some kind of a flicker. And when you pan the camera around, it just highlights it even more. It seems worse. So this is one of the biggest drawbacks of having frame generation running on full screen mode. Now, if you are placed very close to your monitor or to your screen, this takes away from the immersiveness. And in fact, it could even become a very unplayable experience because maybe the camera is not picking it up well enough. I'll try to zoom in and show you the example of how bad this looks as well. But it's bad, let me tell you that. So this is a non-playable experience, according to me. I'm just sharing my real-world experience with you folks. Especially notice the rocks in the background. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit and show you how bad the flicker looks. And maybe I can zoom in a lot more and uh, show you that flicker. So here's a zoomed-in image. And this should give you an idea as to how bad it looks. I mean, take a look at the area which I just highlighted with my finger. It is flickering really bad. And this is what I was talking about being that unplayable experience. I mean, just take a look at it and let me know what you think about it in the comments section. This is with the LSFG turned on. And even if I go over to the settings now and um, show you that this is running on borderless mode right now, let's just change it over to windowed mode from borderless. So let's apply that and uh, okay and now when i come back over to the same area in the windowed mode 
that problem is gone but the image is a much softer image now why is that happening it's obviously happening because it is upscaling from a much lower resolution so as soon as i go into a windowed mode i'm sure this a is scaling down to 1080p and then from that 1080p it is again upscaling so although i'm getting a much better much smoother performance and uh, the fps counter is really up there but the issue is that the resolution takes a hit so the visual fidelity is gone it is no longer that sharp crisp 4k image it's a much softer image i've obviously zoomed in as well to show you the impact of that softness but if you zoom out if you're viewing your television from say a distance of say about eight feet like i am on a 55 inch screen it should not look that bad but if you're up close if you're playing this on a monitor and if you're watching the image from up close then maybe for people who like the resolution to stay sharp they're not going to enjoy this much because obviously it's scaled down and then it has upscaled to get this performance so that hit is obviously gonna bother people because this is a comparatively softer image but yes it is a much smoother image even if, even when you pan when you swing that camera around the performance does not take a hit so the fps is really really smooth it's close to 60 fps now although i have a 120 hertz tv i did just dial it down to 60 hertz and i wanted to see you know what kind of an impact it has so i did not keep my pc on 120 hertz i kept my pc in fact on 60 hertz just to show you what kind of an impact it has so for those of you who are playing on a 4k 60 hertz tv well you can still get up to close to those high 60 fps it's in fact giving me around close to 60 fps the um, overlay of AMD the adrenaline overlay shows me only 15 FPS but uh, that's not the case it's much smoother than that let me tell you that in real world it feels so much closer to that 60 FPS the compromise is that softness in that image so all those trees in that background they look softer and not just that they have this speckled dots as well I think that is a result of scaling that resolution down so that is the drawback that is a big compromise when you're using something like lsfg now i have tried lsfg in uh, other games as well but i particularly wanted to talk about assassin's creed odyssey now with odyssey finding the sweet spot between performance gains and visual fidelity requires experimentation and using lsfg with lower quality settings might actually improve frame rate significantly but at the cost of introducing more noticeable artifacts also when you actually play this game on windowed mode you are anyways sacrificing that crispness that comes from the higher resolution because it's scaling it down and um, on higher quality settings you can minimize artifacts but uh, you have that shimmery effect that i just showed you on screen so lsfg's usefulness depends heavily on your hardware and on your priorities now those with high-end rigs likely won't see a substantial benefit and the potential for visual artifacts might be a turn-off. However, for players with less powerful machines who prioritize frame rate improvements over graphical perfection, LSFG offers a potentially valuable tool, I could say. Now LSFG presents an intriguing option for boosting performance in AC Odyssey, a game without native FSR or DLSS support. And while it can deliver frame rate improvements, the potential for visual artifacts is a significant consideration. The shimmeriness that I just showed you takes away from the immersiveness and ultimately its effectiveness depends on your hardware and your tolerance for graphical imperfections. So for players seeking to squeeze every drop of performance out of Assassin's Creed Odyssey, LSFG is definitely worth exploring. However, be prepared for the possibility of visual trade-offs. That's what I would like to say about LSFG while using it on a game like AC Odyssey. What do you think about this video? What do you think about using LSFG? If you have used it with AC Odyssey, uh, you can just come back and comment in the comment section and let me know what your experience has been. 
And if you have liked this video, I would greatly appreciate it if you could hit that like and subscribe button and also that bell icon in case you want to get notified with all my latest videos. Now you sharing this video also helps my channel because it helps with the YouTube algorithm. I get brownie points every time you share this with your friends and family members who are into gaming and I thank you in advance for doing that. Thank you so much for your support and uh, it's a wrap for this one. I will see you lovely folks in my next video. Until that time, I'll say take care, stay safe and may God bless you all.